Hello, folks. Today is the 25th day of March 2024. Uh, it is about 2 o'clock. It is exactly 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday down here in Tampa, Florida. Um, breaking news. The UN Security Council has passed a resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire um, in Gaza between uh, the IDF and uh, the various forces of the Palestinian resistance and Hamas. Uh, it is a, an immediate ceasefire uh, and also an immediate release of prisoners on both sides. Um, this is causing quite a stir. Quite a stir. It's causing quite a stir with special in the media because they're not exactly sure how to report on it. Uh, it's causing quite a stir uh, in the APAC-backed fucking uh, Congress critters who are hopping up and down because we're not defending the Jews enough, according to them, and is causing a huge stir in Israel. And that really is the question. What caused it? thought I would show you this to start off with, though. Uh, just so people, people just don't really understand. They talk about, oh my God, the terrorism, the terrorism of October the 7th. Hamas are still terrorists. This is what happened. This is what's happening. That's Hamad City. It's outside of Khan Shakur, I believe, or one of those uh, cities. It's a city that's southern, south of, slightly south of um, Gaza City. It's south of where they're running this fucking highway through. Um, we'll talk about that as well, but um, that's Hamad City. It was built by Qatar. Um, 2017, I believe, opened up. It's a massive uh, housing operation <laughs> to put people, Palestinians, in homes. And that, down there in the bottom right side of the quadrant of the image, is what Israel did to it. Based on the terrorism, the terrorism. What about Kibbutz Beri, Scott? Well, there's Kibbutz Beri. A few roofs were burned off of some buildings, some houses. But what caused it? What caused it? Palestinians? No. The IDF. Multiple tanks fired on buildings that were supposedly where Palestinians had taken refuge and were hiding uh, e either with or without Israeli hostages. There was one hostage, and this has been covered by the, by the Times of Israel and by Haratz and by all the rest in Israel. One hostage survived. She was one of 13 in a kibbutz in Barari. Uh, the other 12 all died. They were slaughtered by the Palestinians? No. According to her statements, they died when Israeli tanks opened fire with their shells, with their cannons on the fucking building. When you see the massive destruction of houses... And the cars from October the 7th, that wasn't done by the Palestinians. That was done by Israeli tanks, Israeli machine guns, chain guns mounted on top of Israeli tanks, and by Israeli drones. These are all facts. So, even if you were to say those houses up there in the upper left quadrant were done by the Palestinians. There is such a thing as called proportionality in war. <laughs> it is a guideline to war. According to a former fucking Minister of Defense in the United States, or Secretary of Defense in the United States, a guy by the name of Robert McNamara. Read his book uh, Fog of War. Proportionality exists. Proportionality is a rule. It is a guideline. It is a rule if you look at the International Red Cross, there is such a thing as proportionality, and that is not proportional. So, I just wanted to bring that up and to mention that. Uh, just as a reminder of what we're talking about here. Because so often people forget. <laughs> now, I know <clears throat> I don't look that great. I didn't get ready. I didn't even, I didn't even put the... Uh, the image up my, my logo up on my uh, my screen back behind me. I needed to get this information out there to you. 
And so I, we're not going to mess with. There's three things we're going to talk about quickly. We're going to talk first off, first, off, first off about the UN Security Council resolution and the vote. The vote was 14 to 0 with one abstention. Uh, as you know, there's 15 voting members on the, on the UN Security Council. Uh, the one abstention was the United States. And I'm going to show you the exact moment that that abstention cast vote was cast and the look on her face when she, first of all, did not raise her hand when they asked, are there anybody who opposes this resolution? And second, you'll see, when she raises her hand for the uh, abstaining from the vote, which, of course, her abstention meant that the vote will pass. She knew exactly what she was doing. Question is, does the, is the Biden administration behind it? Uh, are the powers behind the Biden administration behind it? Um, we know that Benjamin Netanyahu is not. I will tell you that right now. There has been a plan for two days from now, a massive conference to be taking place, CONFAD to be taking place in the United States. All of these major members of the war cabinet and their secretary and the minister of defense and all of these people... And I think Benny Gantz and, and all these others coming up from uh, Israel and Mossad, Hannah Mossad and all these guys coming up from Israel to sit, everyone except Bibi Netanyahu to sit down and talk about how can they move forward even with some kind of incursion into Rafah without killing civilians. And that was the plan for this big powwow that was supposed to take place. Supposedly, the incursion in Darafa was going to take place, or was going to take place, or was supposedly scheduled for one week from today. <laughs> and I believe the idea there is to drive people, to, to bring them in, to bring in Israeli troops from, from, from above and drive them down and then put pressure on Egypt to open the fucking floodgates and as many uh, to ethnically cleanse Gaza, as much as they can. That was his point. That's his point. Benjamin Netanyahu's. <laughs> that plan was supposed to take place. Bibi Netanyahu has thrown a tantrum, and he says he is no longer authorizing that meeting to take place. Uh, he is livid about this vote. Um, I'll show you all of that, the, the, the vote that takes place. The second thing I'm going to show you is, of course, what I think might be behind it, and that is, BB's been making a lot of statements recently <laughs> at home, and some dealing with uh, press abroad, um, that really he's the one calling the shots, he's the one in charge, all of this stuff, even, the, even taking credit for the fucking, uh, even taking credit for the, uh, for the NACPA peer, which we'll also talk about at the end of this video. Um, He's been talking about tech, talking this big game, but he also just recently said to uh, the Knesset, I'll show you the link for this, uh, inside Israel, he was, he's on record on the Knesset saying, listen, <laughs> we've got to fucking change the draft system to start drafting these ultra-Orthodox guys and even older ultra-Orthodox guys. We've got to raise that up and jack that up um, and force them in. Because if we don't, Benjamin Netanyahu says, uh, our government will fall. And what does he mean by that? Well, it's quite clear what he means by that. He's not saying the government of Israel will fall. <laughs> He's saying if they can't get more fucking troops to throw into this fucking fight, they're going to have to call it off. And when they call it off, immediately there's going to be a call from the public for a vote of no confidence, which they will get. Even the Likudniks will call, will, will, will vote to get rid of BB. And BB and the Likudniks will be out. He, went, he literally went before Congress, before their version of Congress, and said, if we can't draft these people that we traditionally, and by... And by the nature of their, their, their faith, if we don't force them 
to put guns in their hands and go out there and fight on the front lines, then the, I, I'm going to be out of a job. You'll be out of a job. Some of you will be out of a job. He literally said that. And it's on record. There's no question he said that. So that tells you that this whole thing, in his mind, has been about appeasing the, the, the Likudniks and, the, and, the, and the, the supreme fucking Zionists to the point where it will keep him in office. And if he can't do that, if he can't keep the fucking war going, he's fucking out. <coughs> now, that's, this, is, this is a problem. The Secretary or the Minister of Defense over there has said this will cause major issues in our civilian population. Even those who get drafted, even those who are not fucking ultra-Orthodox Jews, they don't want this to be, they don't want to change the fucking system the way it is to force them to come. I got to go. They got to go. That's not how they see it. They see them differently. They see these ultra-Orthodox Jews differently. And so <clears throat> he's saying, this Minister of Defense is saying, this could tear us apart as a society. What are you doing? Bibi doesn't care. Bibi doesn't give a shit because Bibi knows. Once this is over, he's done. I've said this from, 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 from November on. He knows this. And the Likudniks know this. The last thing we'll talk about is the, uh, where I believe the U.S. military <laughs> is planning on building that pier which is right at the end of Israel's goddamn highway. I'm going to show you the timing of when they got finally finished the highway and got to the fucking Mediterranean Sea on March the 9th. Right then on March the 7th, right before that, Biden first announces during his State of the Union address he's building this pier. Where is the pier going to go? The pier is going to go on the end of the goddamn highway. That's where the pier is going to go. So, and, and that's... <laughs> the pier is like three quarters of the way up through the if Gaza. Break Gaza into quarters, and right below Gaza City is the line for demarcation for like the top quarter of the fucking country. I believe uh, BB's been telling them we're going to cut a line right through the uh, which they've done right through that third quarter of the fucking of Gaza. We're going to force everyone to evacuate northern Gaza as much as we can. We'll take Gaza City and we'll basically bust off the top part of fucking Gaza for Israel. And that's where they'll put the fucking luxury beachfront condos and, and, and development plans like that. That's what I believe. But we'll talk all about that in a second. Let me show you real quick what we're talking about here. There's an article I have from um, Al Jazeera. I'll read that for you in a second, but I want to show you this moment, the UN Security Council. You're going to hear them all of a sudden break into applause because I don't know how many of these people expected this to happen. I'll give them a thumbs up. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2024-254 please their, raise their hand? Look at her sitting there. Look at that. Those are against. Abstention. There you go. The result of the voting is as follows. 14 votes in favor, zero vote against, one abstention. The draft resolution has been adopted as Resolution 2728-2024. There you go. There you go. The United States had just fucking offered up their own resolution, draft resolution, on Friday of last week. It was blocked by the Russian Federation and the Republic of China, or Chinese, uh, the Chinese government. Um, it was blocked because it called for... Uh, criticism of Hamas and Hamas only, and condemnation of Hamas um, as a governing body in Palestine, in Gaza. Uh, so they blocked it. 
So here we are, Monday. Uh, I believe it was from the uh, guy was from uh, who post who who uh, uh, who is it? Uh, who submitted it? Algeria, the ambassador from Algeria, who represents the uh, Arab bloc. Um, it was his resolution, and his resolution passed. Let me read this for you real quick. The United Nations Security Council demands an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian group Hamas in Gaza Strip and the release of all captives as the United States abstained from the vote. The remaining 14 council members voted in favor of the revolution, which was proposed by the 10 elected members of the, by 10 of the elected members of the council. Uh, there was a round of applause in the council chamber after the vote on Monday. The resolution calls for an immediate ceasefire uh, for the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan, which ends in two weeks, and also demands that Hamas free captive seize on October the 7th when it led attacks on Israel. Uh, the bloodbath has continued for far too long, uh, says the ambassador from Algeria, the Arab bloc's current uh, security council member, and a supporter of the resolution. I'm sorry, I thought it was he was the one who penned it. Finally, the Security Council is shouldering its responsibilities. The U.S. has repeatedly blocked Security Council resolutions that put pressure on Israel, but has increasingly shown frustration with its ally as civilian casualties mount in the, in the U.N. warns of impending famine in Gaza. Speaking after the vote, the U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield blamed Hamas for the delay in passing a ceasefire resolution. We did not agree on everything with the resolution, which is why she was which is why she said what she which she said was the reason for the U.S. abstention. Certainly, key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. Thomas Greenfield said she stressed that the release of Israeli captives would lead to an increase in humanitarian aid supplies going into the besieged coastal, coastal enclave. The House White House said the final resolution did not have language the U.S. considered essential, and is in its abstention does not represent a shift in policy. However. Uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said the U.S. failure to veto the resolution is a clear retreat from the previous position and would hurt efforts against Hamas as well as efforts to release Israeli captives held in Gaza. His, also, his office also said Netanyahu will not be sending a high-level delegation to Washington, D.C. in light of the, the U.S. position. <laughs> Let me show you something. There are two good videos here. Um, this one especially. Uh, this is a what's it, who's who's the guy's name? I forget the guy. John Elmer. Uh, it's a good breakdown of what's happening with this. Well, what's happening in Gaza right now, but also what's happening more importantly with this fucking military road that they're uh, finishing up in Gaza. Um, this is the road, by the way. Here's Gaza City uh, up here. This is the breakdown. It's about a top quarter, maybe a third even. You might even say it's like the top third, I guess, uh, is how it breaks down. This is what I was talking about here. Netanyahu warns Likud. Without the IDF draft bill, Israeli government will fall. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced to his party Likud that he would not renege on passing the ultra-Orthodox draft bill and that without the bill, the government would not remain in place. Netanyahu's announcement came in the wake of uh, Minister Without Portfolio and National Unity Chair Benny Gantz's warning that he would leave the war cabinet should the bill be passed and reports of several Likud ministers of opposition to the bill. The bill, should it pass, would extend the exemption of the, uh, from IDF conscription for Haredi, ultra-Orthodox Jews. The subject of drafting the Haredim into the IDF has been a point of contention, particularly in recent weeks, and has sparked a number of protests. Protests conducted by Haredi men have sprung up in cities, including Jerusalem and, I can't pronounce that, where protesters have blocked traffic and light rails and demonstrations in opposition to the push to include them in Israel's military draft. Uh, this is, this is, um, BB is, something's happening with BB right now. We, we don't know exactly what it is, but something is happening with BB right now. You know, <laughs> um, 
did they mobilize the U.S. military in support of their uh, uh, their plans to depopulate Gaza and to control the Gaza Strip like they control the West Bank. Um, you got to remember back in 2005 and uh, the, the, the second intifada kicks off in 2000. There was along this demarcation line a similar fucking uh, dividing line between northern and southern Gaza. And there were clashes constantly between uh, going on between uh, the IDF and Hamas and uh, 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 Palestinian resistance fighters uh, on, on many occasions. So then 2006, I believe it was, or 2000, late 2005, 2006, when the Bush administration ordered uh, the Israelis to remove all settlers and all IDF uh, members from Gaza, it was a big fucking deal. <laughs> but it kind of brought an end to the second intifada and to a lot of the conflict. Uh, and there are videos of settlers being dragged out, kicking and screaming and crying and moaning and, and, and cursing the, uh, the IDF soldiers, dragging them out, calling them all sorts of fucking names, including Nazi. Uh, this is this was a big deal then. Ergo, reinstating it, reinstalling this fucking dividing line, uh, this control faction uh, factor in Gaza uh, is also a big fucking deal. Now, as that guy I told you about, uh, as I showed you that one video, he'll talk about that. It's about an hour long discussion. Uh, well, it's really just kind of a, a lecture on his part, but it's worth the time. He talks about, he'll show you a lot of the conflict that's happening right now in Gaza is right on that fucking road that bisects sort of like two thirds up, but bisects fucking uh, Gaza. It made its way and completed its fucking path to the Mediterranean on October the 9th. And knowing that it was already there, that's when Joe Biden decided to announce to the American public that they're going to put a pier to, you know, to bring fucking aid into... I told you about that the last two times I've talked about this. That's ridiculous. If they wanted to bring the aid in, they could bring the aid in, park the boats, close as they could get, and then Palestinian boats could come out and take the aid and take the aid back to existing piers uh, and fishing piers that already exist. In fact, they've done it before with a jetty out there, and I've talked about that. I called it a fucking pier. It's a jetty, actually, but there is a pier that they use for fishing. The fishing boats used to use when Israel didn't blow them out of the water. Um, so they have the means by which to bring all that aid in. There are 7,000, according to Antonio Gutierrez, who was the uh, General Secretary of the United Nations, he went and visited Gaza and he flipped out. He, saw, he said there's 7,000 fucking trucks, aid trucks, waiting to get into Gaza. And, of course, the Israelis are just deliberately dragging their feet. They're starving the people out. They're not allowing the aid trucks to come in because they want them to starve. They want them miserable. They want them so close to fucking death that as soon as that fucking exit opens up on the pier, they'll be willing to sign up for it because they'll be sick of watching their fucking children die. They won't, they'll, they'll realize either I watch my child fucking starve to death or die of dehydration or fucking diarrhea or whatever the fuck else it is, or I put them in this fucking, we get on the fucking, on the, in line at the pier and we get on the fucking boat and we take off. That's exactly what Benjamin Netanyahu and the Zionist and the IDF want. And that's exactly what some people in the military in the United States want as well. Now, here's a question. <laughs> you say, why, Scott, why would they do this resolution abstention now? First of all, you'd say it's meaningless. It's not meaningless. If it was meaningless, <laughs> BB's fucking entourage would still be on schedule to be here Wednesday or Thursday. If it was meaningless, BB wouldn't be flipping out. It is meaningful. It does have meaning. If it was meaningless, the United States would be like abstaining all the time instead of flatly refusing and denying these fucking UN resolutions like China and Russia did Friday because abstaining and allowing something to pass has fucking meaning. 
That's why they said, no, you're not going to pass this because there, 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 there are teeth to this. There is, there is a, a price to pay for violating UN Security Council resolutions, and Israel knows this. Also, when you say it's meaningless, it's, it's not. And this is what I mean by that. We think of, in terms of Israel and APEC and the Zionist control of our fucking government um, as intrusive, and it is. And so that if somebody is running against, say I decide to run down here in Florida uh, against uh, somebody who's for, for Senate in, fucking, in, in the United States Senate, <laughs> I am opposed to what's going on there, but he is wholeheartedly backed by the Sheldon Allison kind of crowd or the or APAC or, or all the other fucking, um, 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 the Anti-Defamation League and getting money funneled to him from business leaders in Tel Aviv. It's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to think that I would be able to fucking win, especially with the election system that we have. Well, the same holds true in, in there because, so when somebody has that Primer, primer, primer of, of, of acceptance. They've got that standing behind them. They've got APEC and the power of APEC standing behind them. <laughs> a lot of people think, you know, well, it's just not worth trying because I'm not going to be able to look at, look at what happened to Cynthia McKinney. She spoke her mind. She spoke how she felt. She didn't fucking hold back. And of course, those that had APEC behind them and the APEC money behind them got rid of her. Okay. We understand that. And very few politicians in America, and especially in, the, the, in, in national government, in federal government, uh, are willing to test their mettle against the power of APEC. Same holds true in Israel, in the Knesset. And the problem for BB is, <laughs> with this abstention, it's going to send a message to all of those folks in the Knesset and all of those folks in the political parties and all of those folks who the opposition who think that just they're just waiting for the moment where BB is weakest. And BB knows when this thing is over and there's a permanent ceasefire and it's done and over with, that's his weakest. But what's happening now is a signal. The US administration is signaling to the fucking vultures. And those who were circling the fucking BB's fucking corpse lying in the goddamn desert. They're saying, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna support this, we're not gonna support you on this, we're gonna abstain. Okay. That's a mighty powerful fucking message. Now all of a sudden BB's walking down the hall and he's getting the side eye looks. Before he was getting the praise, because everyone knew, in spite of all the fucking pressure on Bent on, on, on Biden, genocidal Joe, especially in an election year, especially when he's going up against someone as difficult as Trump, genocidal Joe was still standing with fucking BB. And now, apparently, so, Netanyahu's looking, he's looking over his shoulder. He's looking over his shoulder. Because he knows. Now, here's, here's, this is the tell-all. <laughs> here's the tell-all. He has come out and said uh, that, that, that that group will not come to uh, the United States and Washington and meet with Biden's people and, and Secretary of Defense and, and all of these people, and CIA and all these people in the United States. Uh, they won't be coming here. What if they do anyway? What message is that sending? That's the end of, ne of, of Bibi Netanyahu. People start, people, people in his close entourage will start, they'll look for that, you know, what's, what's it called? A, what's it called? A uh, go bag? They'll start packing their shit up. They'll start taking the stuff out of their offices. Because they'll know, you know, when BB's heading down, BB's getting flushed down the toilet, they don't want to fucking follow. Um, let me just go over. Uh, I think it's, it's pretty much I've, I've told you what's happening with the rest of it. Um, 
BB claims to APAC that he was the one who uh, suggested the Gaza aid C route to Joe Biden two weeks into the fucking thing, um, that, which is what I call the fucking uh, the Nakba Bridge. Um, and again, this is important. Uh, worth watching this on by Jeff Hed uh, Chris Hedges as well. Is why do the media keep parroting Israel's genocidal lies? That's why I made that image for you guys to see. Um, but definitely, John Elmer's was behind the U.S. Army's Gaza Pier project. Well worth the time. Um, I want to look at the timing here. The BBC, March the 10th, BBC reported Israel com IDF completes the road across the width of Gaza, satellite images show. They, they knew it was happening before that. So on, on March the 7th, in his State of the Union address, Joe Biden announces for the first time to the people, to the American public, that they are building this fucking pier that I declare the Nakba pier uh, that will help, quote unquote, bring in fucking aid to the people in fucking Gaza. It's got nothing to do with that because they're going to be handing it over to Israelis. Israelis will be in control of that. Why will Israelis be in control of that? Because it'll be on their, at the end of their goddamn road. This is their fucking road. This is their road. It'll be at the end of their fucking road. That's why they're in charge of it. And they're going to have troops stationed all across this fucking road. And they're going to set up fucking cross, set up the same kind of things that they had back in, in 2000 and 2000, to 2000 and 2005 during the fucking, even leading up to the, the second intifada. Um, this is, this is, it's my, it's my belief that this, this proves that this is the location of where this thing is going to go, where this pier is going to go. Now, again, this would be fucking wild. If, now, again, <laughs> it's going to be another month in a couple, in a week before <laughs> the vessels make their way from where they are, where they're at, in their in their passage now to uh, Cyprus, and then from Cyprus on to Gaza. Um, so we're looking at another five weeks, four weeks, four and a half weeks before they get there. Um, what would be interesting is if they chose to set it up someplace else. Or if they're threatening to set it up someplace else. You know, <laughs> the Biden administration can support Israel's efforts to control Gaza like they did from 2000, from, uh, to 2000 the second intifada, uh, the same way they had set up before. They can, they can, uh, get behind doing that and not necessarily uh, evicting all Palestinians from Gaza, not just wiping Gaza off the map. Um, maybe do it through incrementalism. Of course, that's not going to satisfy the fucking Zionists and the Likudniks. So if that happens, if that's the plan, Bibi Netanyahu is going to say no, he's going to throw his feet, st stamp his feet and throw a fit, which is exactly what he's doing right now. That's a possibility. They might not be 100% on board of just exiting all the fucking Palestinians from Gaza and moving in all the fucking um, Israeli Jews who are tired of living in apartments and giving them their own brand new fucking houses, uh, like settlers, which of course is what a lot of them are hoping for. Um, that might not be the plan that they accept. However, accepting anything short of kicking every fucking Israeli out of fucking Gaza and every Israeli out of the West Bank and recognizing uh, there is an Israel and there is a Palestine according to the June 1967 Green Line borders. Anything short of that is not going to be acceptable. And it's not going to be acceptable by the, uh, by the Muslim world and the Arab communities and the Arab nations. It's not going to be acceptable by fucking Hamas. It's not going to be acceptable by the Palestinians. 
and it probably won't be acceptable by acceptable by Egypt as well. So they're kind of in a, in a, in a, in a difficult spot. But that's where they are with that. Um, um, yeah, so this is where we are. Uh, that's right. There was a witness to say Israeli tanks crushed more bodies, crushed people at the uh, Al-Shifa hospital uh, recently. That's where we are with that. So that's today's news. Uh, and it is... Uh, it is a monumental development, um, which is all over the place right now in the mainstream media as well as the alternative media. Uh, what it means, I think, is uh, it's more influential inside of Israel than I think it is outside. Netanyahu might say to uh, the people he doesn't give a shit, he's going to continue with this. This uh, He says he's, he's been saying repeatedly that it doesn't, it doesn't matter what anybody says, he's going to fucking invade Rafa. <laughs> Listen, they're having a hard time. They're having a hard time maintaining the combat that they're maintaining now. Again, I would, I would suggest you go watch that guy's video. There's several videos, especially on that highway. The Palestinians are deeply opposed to that highway being there. And so they are making the IDF pay in blood uh, a heavy price for it. And, of course, the IDF is not reporting on their fucking casualties anymore because they don't want to report on their casualties because the people in Israel are already fucking pissed off. Now, <laughs> understand this. This is why this is one of the reasons. So you have inside Israel, you have the pressure that's going to be put on fucking Bibi Netanyahu because the other politicians and other fucking operatives and other people who are circling around waiting for their opportunity, they're going to smell blood in the water. They're going to smell weakness. Uh, Bibi's weakness, which is why the abstaining from that vote, the message that abstaining from that vote sends. But not just that. Now that there's a UN Security Council resolution and there will be biting fucking punishment that will affect, negatively affect the state of Israel in all sorts of ways, <laughs> the Israeli people who want their loved ones back or want the hostages back, whether they know them or not, they're going to say, okay, this is it. You got to do what's right now. This is the UN Security Council saying you got. You, you think that the, you know the Jewish people in Israel are going to be like, oh, we don't give a shit. We're better than that. S some will do that, but the vast majority of them, or at least half of the people in fucking, because it's a it's a it's good sized percentage. They're going to say, okay, that's fine. This is the, this is the fucking excuse that you need to say, you know what, we're done. We taught them a lesson. Now let's withdraw. Exchange fucking prisoners and get our people back. If Benjamin Netanyahu does not do that at this point, they've already been million plus, a million strong protesting against this, this government. <laughs> if, if, he does, if he still sticks with it, in spite of the fucking international community saying, that's enough, and the people in Israel are going to revolt against him. That's one of the things he's... Now, go back to what Gantz said and the, second, and the, and the Minister of Defense, who also said something similar about this, said about his, his, res, his, his resolution to <laughs> get more fucking uh, Hasidim into, into, into the fucking into the trenches because they haven't got enough people anymore in, the, in fighting this, this, this conflict. Um, they already said... The mood in Israel on the streets in Tel Aviv is bad. Now we got this, and he's going to say fuck you to the international community. He's going to say fuck you to the world. We're going to blow up children and fucking Rafa. It's not going to go. It's not going to fucking fly. This could be the beginning. The beginning of the end was October 7th for Bibi Netanyahu. The beginning of the end was actually when people came to them and they said... <laughs> Hamas and, uh, and the Palestinian resistance organizations, they have a plan. And BB and the head of Mossad and the head of the fucking IDF said, it's aspirational. 
They'll, they'd never do it. They haven't got the guts. They can't, they can't organize amongst themselves anything like that. That was the beginning of the end. Firing Israeli tanks, giving the order to fire Israeli tanks into uh, Israeli kibbutzes, that was the beginning of the end. Giving the order to, for drone operators to fire on highways because they might kill one or two fucking Palestinians, that was the beginning of the end. Following the Hannibal Directive, when it involved fucking civilians as opposed to soldiers taken hostage, that was the beginning of the end. All the lies they told about fucking beheaded babies and people in, and babies in ovens and babies and fucking hanging on the fucking clothesline and babies on babies, <laughs> that was the beginning of the end. And now, telling the UN resolution, security, the Security Council, to fuck off. That's the end. BB's done. Uh, and it won't be long. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, sorry about the haphazard way I did it, but there you go. Take care.